This week on Hands On Tech, I got my hands on a beast of a laptop. You just have to check this out. Hands On Tech is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This, this is twit. twit. This episode of Hands On Tech is brought to you by Epson's EcoTank Printers. Now you can kiss expensive cartridges goodbye. Check out EcoTank Printers at epson.com slash ecotankleo. Hey folks, I'm Matt Pruitt. This is Hands On Tech here at twit.tv. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. And this week, we're gonna take a look at this massive Predator Triton 900 laptop from the folks at Acer. And this is specifically a gamer's laptop, just to be frank with you. I'm not so sure about the laptop name because you look at it, this thing is huge. If I put it in front of me, it almost covers me up in, this, in the camera here on Twit. Unbelievable. But let's go ahead and dive into this device and get a little bit more information about it for you. What we have is a 17 inch display that is touchscreen UHD and you're going to get about three hours of battery life on this because there's a lot of power that's needed for this thing. You have an NVIDIA RTX 2080 graphics card that is totally separated and, and not built into the motherboard. This is absolutely full of power that's going to give you plenty of frames per seconds for whatever game that you try to throw at it. But you also get the Intel 9th Gen Core i9-9750H that is set to 2.6 gigahertz. And of course, you can overclock it. And then you're gonna get 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. Now, the interesting thing about the storage is you got two 512 gigabyte SSDs, but they're set to a RAID 0. So you're gonna get some optimal performance and you're gonna be able to have plenty of storage for whatever games you're gonna play, or if you're like me, content that you're trying to create. Now, who is this device for? Well, it's not for the traveler being at 17 inches in size, as well as being almost 10 pounds, I believe it's like 9.2 pounds in total weight. You're not gonna fit this in your average backpack. This is for the gamer that's going to be you know, hanging out at their home or what have you, or the studio just and have it set up. But if they need to go to their favorite LAN party or if they're going to a game in competition, this allows them to pack it all in one simple form factor and not necessarily have to worry about grabbing a big computer towel or an external GPU or anything like that. It is perfectly fine for, for just picking up and going with that standpoint. Another cool feature that the gamers are going to enjoy is the Predator Sense software that's built into this laptop. Now, what is Predator Sense? Predator Sense is an easy way for you to hop in and do any of your overclocking and do any of your system management and, and monitoring. You can check the fan speeds. You can, you can increase it, decrease it. You can check uh, the overclocking speed. You can check the memory testing. You can even change how you would like all of your backlit LEDs to show up on your keyboard. It's pretty neat. You can go in and play around with different settings as far as giving it a whirl or, or rainbow effect or what I did simply was just highlighted the A and T keys for me. I thought that was a nice touch. It's not something that I particularly would do. But again, the gaming community, they love all of their RGB goodness and the, the Predator software that's built in really makes that stuff easy for them to go in and customize this device and really make it their own so they can go out there and continue their mission of fragging. Now, I played around with this device. I'm not much of a gamer. I did play, some, play a couple games on it, but my concern is I have all of this horsepower. Can I run Photoshop? Can I run Premiere Pro? Can I run After Effects? And the answers to those questions are, Yes, yes, and somewhat. With regards to editing photos on here, it was not much of a problem. I could throw several layers and several raw files at this machine without much of an issue, and it just kept ticking and kept doing whatever I needed it to do with regards to the Wacom tablet that I was using, with regards to adding adjustments and colors and grading, and it, it just kept going. It was a dream when it came to that. Now, from the video side of things, Premiere Pro was, was pretty good with HD footage, 
and it was actually fairly well with 4K footage. I like to put up some drone videos or what have you, or even just pixel video because your smartphone is shooting in 4K. And you have to put this onto your timeline and, and add any of your effects and add any of your uh, extra texts and fonts and things of that nature. And it just kept going. Traditionally, when you're dealing with high resolution footage inside of Premiere Pro or even um, something like Final Cut or DaVinci, you have some sort of proxy workflow where you need to offload some of that data into another file so you can continue to do your editing workflow. I didn't use any proxies when I was playing around with this device. It just kept going. Now, After Effects, on the other hand, uh, <laughs> I was a bit surprised because I thought After Effects could handle it just as well uh, since Premiere Pro could. I tried to create just simple motion graphics inside of After Effects and a seven second 4K clip at 60 frames per second took about four minutes to render out. I didn't have a whole lot going on with it other than just moving the 3D graphics around and I did maybe one or two different little effects on it. And four minutes for a seven second clip was a bit of a surprise. I thought it would render it out much faster than that. Um, granted, you could turn your playback resolution down inside of After Effects to give you a much better experience, but I didn't want to do that. This has a UHD screen on it. Why I want to turn that resolution down? So that was a bit of a surprise and a little bit of a letdown, but overall, this is still pretty daggum powerful. This episode of Hands-On Tech is brought to you by Epson. Now you can kiss expensive ink cartridges goodbye. Epson's EcoTank comes with a ridiculous amount of ink so you can print thousands and thousands of pages. It has supersized, easy to fill ink tanks, which mean you never hassle with buying or changing ink cartridges again. It's revolutionary and it's changing the way people print. Less frustration and more time on business tasks that matter. Transform the way your home or office prints and do away with out of ink frustration. Go to Epson.com slash Ecotank Leo and just feel and chill. Epson, exceed your vision. Who is this device made for? It's not necessarily made for me as a content creator. This is strictly for the gamers that are wanting to just sit down and have a good time on whatever massive online game that they're playing or just go to a different tournament or LAN party and just have a great time. It's specifically designed for them all the way down to the way they have the fins and fans set up on here. They have some additional updates to the fan system where Supposedly, it's a lot quieter than previous generations of the Predator. Uh, I don't know if I can attest to it being a quiet machine because you have all of this extra horsepower from the graphics card. The fans are going to spin up pretty quickly and pretty loudly and violently. So it's, it could be rather disturbing if you're sitting in an office where, in my case, sitting in the office next to Mr. Jason Howell and Mr. Micah Sargent, and it sounded like a Boeing 787 was trying to take off inside of their office. Not good. And all I was doing was just playing a video game. It kept the device cool, but it could be rather loud. I ended up propping the Predator up onto an extra little brick to encourage a little better airflow, and that made the fan slow down just a touch, but again, it was still pretty loud. This doesn't matter ideally to gamers because it seems like most gamers are wearing headphones and cans over their ears anyway, so they would never hear it. But anybody surrounding them, they may be a little bit bothered by the sound of this thing. It comes with plenty of ports. You have two USB-C ports and two USB-A ports, but another cool feature on the side is one of the USB ports sort of hides away just in case you had a mouse dongle like what I have here. If you had it out to the side, it could be, you know, exposed and get hit accidentally and possibly break that port. But they allowed you to just plug this, your, your dongle in and close the port down and sort of hide it away. That way it's a little more flush and more secure. You never even know it's there. You actually have to remember, oh yeah, I put my mouse dongle there. I thought that was a nice feature and it's just another way of keeping all of the ports safe and working properly. The keyboard. Ooh, I did not like this keyboard, folks. <laughs> in the office, we had a challenge with the keyboard. I wanted to type out a couple of different sentences on it, um, just shooting emails over one day, and it was not a great experience, but that's okay. Gamers are not typing. Gamers are fragging people. That's, that's what they're doing on this device. Um, 
My issue was some of the keys are shifted ever so slightly. The shift key on the right is not in the right spot. The question mark key is shifted way to the left when it's usually on the right. Uh, the trackpad is totally fine being on the right hand side as if you were using an actual mouse. That felt comfortable, but again, the typing experience, not something I would recommend. I ended up connecting an external keyboard to it, Bluetooth that is, and it worked perfectly fine for me to be able to get some work done. You can get this particular build at $37.99.99, and that's coming with all of the bells and whistles with the powerful RTX graphics card from NVIDIA, the touchscreen swivel 4K display, massive, massive 17-inch 4K display, all of the horsepower of the Core i9, 32 gigs of RAM, and the additional USB-C Thunderbolt ports. So in, just in case you wanted to plug in an additional monitor, you have that capability. But I doubt you're going to do that because this display is beautiful as it is. So that's it for this week's episode of Hands On Tech, showing off the awesome Predator Triton 900 laptop from the folks at Acer. Appreciate them sending it over for us to check it out and test it out and put it through its paces and beat it up a little bit because it's a lot of fun seeing just how much data we can throw at this device and see if it can handle it. And for the most part, it is ready for the task. Be sure to follow my show, that is twit.tv slash hop, and that's hands-on photography, where I'm going to talk about different tips and tricks to help make you a better photographer here on the twit.tv network. Thank you all so much for your continued support. We'll catch you next time on Hands On Tech. Take care. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching Hands On Tech.